All right, Shalom. Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praise to Yahweh. Yahweh. By Hashem. Yahweh Shai. By Hashem. Rechak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And also, we want to give a peace and salutations to the elect, the house of David. Start with the 144,000, as well as the rest of the men, women, and children whom the Lord will have mercy on, man. So, uh, me and the brother were uh, breaking bread. We just uh, celebrated, uh, you know, one of uh, eight days of the holy day that we are in Hanukkah, Hanach, or Hanukkah, um, the dedication, the rededication of the temple. All right, and, um, you know, we were in the spirit and wanted to do a quick lesson, man. Um, when you uh, read the book of Hanukkah, when you read that story, the book of Hanukkah, is the book of Maccabees 1 through 4, all right, uh, the narrative is that uh, the Israelites were in uh, dire straits, and the rulers who were in rulership at the time were the uh, Greeks, all right, the Greeks, and through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Shai, for years we've been pushing that the Greeks, all right, were the Edomites. That's right. And we have 100% uh, proof, all right, that the Greeks are the Edomites, and everything that happened in the Hanukkah, all right, is uh, spiritually can be linked right now. All right, and somehow, some way, whether it be Gentiles, whether it be the elect being gathered, or whether it be Esau coming down against the uh, chosen ones who, who actually care for the heritage, all right, who are who are willing to stand for the covenant of their fathers and not sell out. There's so many things in this story when you read this uh, the story of this holy day, which how wish I uh, celebrated that this holy day. Get That's it. right. Come. Get it. Uh, what's I got that, you. John? Let's John, get that. Let's say John the tenth chapter. Right, because he deserved the glory first before anything, any, either way it goes, man. All right, because Yahweh Shai celebrated this holy day, man. And when, we, when we're about to read, this holy day is about being defended, all right, from the Heavenly Father, by the Heavenly Father, all right, which in this time is going to be through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, from Esau, man. That's what we need. All right, go ahead, brother. This is St. John chapter, uh, chapter 10, verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Yahweh Shai walked in the temple of Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him. <laughs> his own temple. Right. I know, right? Exactly. Exactly. That he built. You know, that he had built. Go ahead. Gone. And then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us doubt? If thou be the Mashiach, tell us plainly. Right. So he was at the feast of dedication, man. And when you read... Uh, the, the, the origin of the Feast of Dedication is right here in 1 Maccabees 1 through 4, man. And we're going to read the last verse of the fourth chapter, man. And what me and the brother were uh, breaking bread on is that, look, this could very well be that generation, man, that that uh, uh, could be delivered out of the hands of the enemy, man, unto salvation. Because it was always spoken about a remnant that's going to be delivered. Okay, and, and within their captivity, they will come out of a great falling away and remember themselves and come back, you know, to the understanding of the name of the Lord, who, uh, who they were. We could very well be that generation, man, which is very, very important and very beautiful at the same time. It's, it's beautiful, man. That's right. All right? That's right. Go ahead, brother. I, you got? And just um, going into that um, Feast of Dedication, when you go to the, the Greek. Strong's G, 1456. Echinia. Echinia. Then it says dedication, consecration. And then it says in particular, the annual feast celebrated eight days beginning the 25th day. It says Chislev, but it's really Kashalu. Well, you know, right. it says middle of our December, right. which we ultimately understand. It, it, it really debates. It really goes into late October to December, right, depending right. on when a new moon follows Whenever within that year. Follows, right, and it's... And then, then the Feast of Hanukkah is eight days. Right. All right, a complete cycle and the rebirth of a new cycle, mm -hmm. meaning the, the eternity, all right, forever, all right? Eight represents eternity. Right. Seven is completion. But at the, on the sundown of the seventh day, at evening is technically the eighth day. Right. All right, which is the renewal of that uh, uh, perpetual of that eternity, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's what uh, Hanukkah represented. God. You, know, uh, you know, overcoming Esau, the Lord delivering us from Esau, 
all right and a feast after that just pretty much uh, uh, uh completion being eternity man mm -hmm. eight days you know go ahead done instituted by judas maccabees 164 bc in memory of the cleansing of the temple from the pollution of Antiochus Epiphanes. Right, Anti and who who was that? An Edomite man. Antiochus Epiphanes is an Edomite man. Right. And the the great falling away came through the Edomites, man. And when you read that story of Hanukkah, martial law was declared against the Israelites, mm -hmm. just as martial law is about to be declared against you Israelites, which it already is against you Israelites. Right, right, right. But how much more, man, when this man knows that this is the final fight? For this piece of This blessing that he received From the heavenly father man mm -hmm. What did the Lord tell Esau Behold Thou blessing thou, thou dwelling Should be the fatness of the earth And the dew of heaven Alright And by the sword Shall I live man That's right This is it So he gonna fight for that You got something Con yeah When you go into it um, You know Yahawashai um, Yahawashai talked about The abomination that made desolate And he was alluding back To what Daniel But when Daniel talked about it you know, Daniel was alluding to this right here and the future prophecy, what the elders going into, man. What you what, what you read about here in First Maccabees when those when those Greeks or those Edomites, I should say, came over and made our land desolate. That's what had taken place, man. He had forced us to take on his image, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? That 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 all that whole right. Hellenist that whole Hellenist movement, man, to put his image and make it of our own. Esau's gonna recreate that, except for. He's going to do that bionically with a chip, you know, and he's going to put that inside of us, man. But they, they, gonna put, try. he's going to, he's going to try. Right. Exactly. He's going to do that to a lot of people, but the elect, the elect ain't going to take it, right. you know. But when you go into that, when you go into what had happened during the ancient time, man, he had pushed that, made us uh, eat swine's flesh. Right. And when I say us, I'm just talking about Israel within general, right. because those chosen men didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? They sacrifice swine's flesh and worship their god Jupiter. And you read that in 2 Maccabees, the sixth chapter. And when you go into Jupiter, you know what I'm saying? That's Zeus, the same person. And how do you say Jesus in the in, in, in language? Jesus or Jesus. Right. So it's that same exact energy that's being pushed. But hey, just like those ancient men that stood stiffly and stood boldly back then. Right, for the covenant. And for the covenant, for Yahweh for Hashem Yahweh Shai. They didn't take on that image That's going to apply within this day of the election man. Right, right We may be that generation, brothers I mean, act like it Fight like you are of that generation That's right That is going to see life man. Alright, death is not coming to that generation Okay As Yahweh Shai said There be some here that shall not taste the death Now read that last verse In the story of the Hanukkah God All Right this is 1st Maccabees chapter 4 verse 61 Now brothers read 1st Maccabees 1 Alright uh, Through the 4th chapter All all, all 4 chapters If you want to understand Hanukkah And it's full Let's go ahead Gone. Verse 61 And they set their garrison to keep it And fortified the Surah To preserve it That the people might have a defense Against Idumia Idumia now, when you read the story of Hanukkah, who was fighting against the Israelites? The Greeks. Right. Now, we know originally the Greeks were not so-called white people, but they stole that heritage. As the scriptures say, they oppress a man and his heritage. So the Greeks that we were fighting against were actual Edomites. And this is 100% truth. Right. Read that again, brother. God. Because who, who, and who, who came against the Israelites? At this time Antiochus Right Who was he? A Greek Yep Edomite First Maccabees So what was Slocky. the story What was the story Of Hanukkah all about Which Yahweh Celebrated this What was the end all Be all of the holy day Which we'll get more into it In a whole nother lesson But we wanted to bring this out And then we want to get Another precept To show you This can very well Be that generation all right, that all of these things that we read about symbolically, all right, pertain to. Right. Okay? Because the things that happen in the Old Testament apply now in spirit. All right? Even from the priesthood to the, to the remnant, everything. Go ahead. God. Verse 61. And they set their garrison to keep it and fortified that sure to preserve it. That the people might have a defense against Idumia. Against Idumia? Why was that the last thing said in the chapter pertaining to the feast of Hanukkah, man? Hanukkah. Huh? Why is that? 
Get a uh, second edge of 69, man. Second edge 69? Okay. Yep. Just bring it out for, for, for edification sake, Absolutely. Man. Indeed. Because at the end of the day, that means something spiritually if you're an Israelite, man. We're living in a time, man, where this man is being exposed. All these different nations have this nuclear capability. Everything is off. We could very well be that generation, all right, that see life, man. That's why... In your mind frame and what you speak and what you think, should life should be at the forefront of it. Not dying and living and Esau winning, not worrying about what Esau going to do. Hey, well, when you read the story of Hanukkah, Esau came and he lost, man. Right. He completely lost, man. Yeah. Twice. He was like, oh, all right. He lost that one time. He was like, he going to come out again. These many 6,500, all right, uh, uh, troops come against him. We had 10,000 and one. Right now, in this time, we have spiritually 144,000, man. That's right. How many do they have? Billions, bro. Yeah. If I may, Elder, when, when you look at the amount of troops that those Edomites had had, and you looked at the countenance of our own people that had fought that battle, right. like you had stated, they didn't. we didn't have the mindset of worrying. No. Nah. We had the mindset of, look, bro. this is our God. Right. He saved us before. He's a God of salvation. He's a God of mercy. Right. He's going to save us again in the time of trouble. Well, Judas Maccabees, what did he bring out? He brought out the scriptures. He brought out right. Moses, Pharaoh, right. when he came with all his chariots, you know? God, that's right. That's right. He brought up those points. Pretty much, look what they did of old. Did they trust in the Lord back then? So we have to apply this within ourselves today. Trust in Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and he's going to fight for us, man. Right. Right. We understand this wholeheartedly. We understand these Edomites are going to come against us in this day. We prophesy about it. It's written in the scriptures. We understand about the last days. We understand in Daniel 12 where it says there's a time that's coming that has never before been seen on the face of this earth. Right. So we talk about these things and we're prepping up for it to come. Right. But we need to keep that mindset that our ancient forefathers had had right. when tribulation was presented in front of us. Right. Like, right. Go ahead. Like Yahweh Shah said in John 16, man. Be of good cheer when you are in tribulation. I've overcome the world. I've overcome the world. Right, right. Do we believe that is the question? We have to walk as such, man. Right, right, right. And and all of the and when you think when you deal with the abomination to make it desolate with Antiochus, and then you had an abomination to make it desolate dealing with 70 AD. Right. But right, also right. there's an abomination to make it desolate, which is prophesied in the scriptures as the time that is the worst time that the earth has ever seen. Right. And ultimately, what were the, what was Esau coming after? The temple. Mm -hmm. The temple, man. Because he understands that where that sacrifice is done, the Lord hears Israel. Mm -hmm. And he knows that. Israel don't know, but we know. Right. As the elect, we understand us making our bodies a living sacrifice and offering up that sweet savor is going to have the Lord look down and have favor unto us, man. Right. So Esau always saw the reason he take a, took away the daily sacrifice was because he understood the power that came with it man go ahead brother god this is second Ezra chapter 6 verse 9 it says for esau is the end of the world and jacob is the beginning of it that followed bro that last the very last scripture dealing with the feast of hanukkah dealt with the lord defending us against esau bro. right how can we tie that spiritually to now Esau is the end of the world, man. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, man. We could very well be that generation, man. All right? Get uh, Psalms uh, 144. Okay. And then we'll get that Psalms 124. All right. Okay. Man, we here, man. Like, hey, you got to live and think with your mind. You got to think salvation into existence, man. Speaking into existence, man. We're not in a time of losing, man. We're in a time of winning, man. That's right. We're in a time of salvation and victory. Life, man. We've we've already tasted of death. Now we can rule with 360, all right, degrees of understanding, man. Both righteous and understanding wicked, man. And why it shouldn't be. We're living in a time of overcoming death, man. Go ahead, brother. This is Psalms 144 starting at the top. Start at uh, 9, see what 9 say. Okay, okay. Oh, God. Psalms 144, 9. I will sing a new song unto thee, right. O Yahweh. Right. Upon a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings right. will I sing praises unto thee. Right. We're singing that new song, man. 
All right, just as the uh, the choir that David right, assembled, exactly. which were the ancient exactly. priests, now we're priests under the order of Melchizedek, and the new song that we're in charge of is this doctrine, man. That's right. And we're singing that. And what is it accompanied with? Go ahead. God. It is he that giveth salvation unto kings, who delivereth David his servant from the hurtful sword. Right. He delivered David from the hurtful sword. Who was blessed with the sword? Right. Who's going to receive the mercies of David, the house of David? That sword is coming, man. And we're not here to sugarcoat you Israelites and tell you something to make you feel better. The sword is coming, man. And this man has his eyes on the oil, man. Just right. as earlier, we had an incident with some oil. Esau's coming after the oil. And that oil is pertained through the elect. Okay? Go ahead. God. Verse, uh, verse 11. Ribby. So like, yeah, that sword, me. that sword that came down through Antiochus at the time of Hanukkah, man, and his men. Go ahead. Rid me and deliver me from the hands of strange children Woo! whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. That's what we need deliverance from, man. Right. Because that's letting you know the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, and he, he and he deals uh, uh, wickedly with it, man. Right. So we need deliverance from. The strange man whose mouth speaketh vanity, man. Right. All right, go ahead. Uh, 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 whatever else you got. You want to get that 24? Yeah, we can end it off on that Psalms 24. Yeah, let's get that Psalms 24. Brothers, we could very well be of that generation, man. Understand that there are two generations within Israel. You have the generation of the wicked, the brute beast made to be taken. And you have the generation of the righteous, those who are slated to be delivered, man. Because we, you can sit here all day and think about, you know, what if Esau, this, that. No, Esau is not prophesied to, to win, man. Right, that's right. He ain't prophesied to win. Where is that written? Show me the victory of Esau. Right. No, the elect are prophesied to be delivered out of his hands, man. That's right, that's right. So, uh, real quick, Salakia. That's all Psalms good. One, uh, uh, Luke 1 and 68. Oh, Khan, let's get it. Luke 1 and 68. Right. I then we'll you. get that, man. Because we could be of that generation, brothers, man. Walk with that, walk with that confidence, man. In the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. This is Luke 1 and 68. Blessed be Yahweh, the Lord Yahweh of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Right. And he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which hath been since the world began. Right. And David through David. All right, is the kingdom of heaven going to be set up? The throne of David is going to be set up for eternity. But there was promised one to sit on the throne of David, which was out of his loins, which is Solomon. Yeah, I wish I go ahead. God, verse 71, that we should be saved from our enemies. Saved from our enemies. Ain't that what Hanukkah was all about? Right. Hanukkah was all about us being the Lord delivering us from our enemies and working a miraculous work. That's which right. that miraculous work is going to be worked in this time. That's right. It has to be because carnally, we there there's no way we can win. Right. No matter how many guns we got, you know, no matter how many uh 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 uh, uh, uh how many tanks or whatever we can get, we will not win that battle, man. Right. It's not. There's no way. God. That's his blessing. Go ahead. That's right. If if I may. You know, when we when we had um won that when we had won that battle ultimately, we what did we do? We rededicated the temple afterwards. The temple. Do we not have the victory already through your Abishai's blood? Right. So what are we doing right now within this process? Right. We're rededicating the temple, knowing Esau's getting ready to come at us, but he's not gonna overcome his elect. Alright, Esau has no victory. You don't read about no scriptures in the Bible of a future right. prophecy of Esau having to complete right. it's not overall written. victory. It's not so as we continue to dedicate this temple and continue to build, it's a constant reminder who the victory is already given to. Right. We just got to strive for it, man, and understand that we will be redeemed from our enemies right. if we keep moving forward and keep believing. Right, right. Well, uh, what does John say? We have overcome the wicked. That's right. So <laughs> there's already men chosen from the foundation of the earth to overcome right. Esau. And that's what Hanukkah was all about, man. That's right. And that's why we're, we've waken up to our heritage in these latter days to celebrate these things, all right, to the best of our ability, man. God. Go ahead. God. It says, um, verse 72, 
to perform the mercy promised to our fathers. Read verse 71. Okay, verse 7, Luke 1 and 71. That we should be saved from our enemies Man. and from the hand of all that hate us. Right. To perform the mercy. To perform. To perform. So we're doing. To right. perform the mercy that's promised to our I'm a slock it. Yeah, that's what right. slock it. Yeah, that's what Yahweh is doing. Right. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Bam. You know? Bam. Hey. And when, you, God, <laughs> and when you look at it, man, when you read it in uh, Malachi, the third chapter, matter of fact, if I can get that get it. really quick, man. Get it, my brother. This is Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. Okay, because um, it's talking about Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, or Yahweh Shai performing that, you know what I'm saying, going into the how, how he remembered that covenant. Okay? Right. This is Malachi 3 and 16. This is how he's able to remember the covenant. Are we not going into building a temple right now? Right. We're going into it spiritually. Right. Malachi 3 and 16. The temple That's right. David, that's right. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And that's what we're doing right now spiritually. What are we doing? We're building. When we speak one to another, when we prophesy, right. when we communicate, that's rededicating of the temple. Right. Okay? It says, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened. He so he heard it. He listened because you got to think, what will we promise to get back? The understanding of that name, those right. names, man. Right. He said, they shall think upon my name. And any time, what did the Lord say? If you turn to the east and call upon my name, hey, I'll have mercy. That's right. So when Israel was always in trouble, read the scriptures. What did it take for them to, to get back in good graces with the Lord? Call back on his name. That's right. Repent. And that's what's happening through this generation, man. And we're a part of that, man. God. That's beautiful, man. Call hello, y'all. Go ahead. That's right. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And check this out. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. Right. And that thought upon his name. Woo! That thought upon his name. Right. And that book of remembrance, what does that go into? Ultimately, it goes into the elect already being written in it. Right. But speaking one to another, building, dedicating the temple, right. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is looking at making that. Making those sacrifices. Making those sacrifices. Preach. And he's like, boom, hey, this book is already written. Because what was done in the temple? Sacrifice. That's right. Man. That's right. Come on, man. God. They got all your passwords. You have to change them. Nah, I mean, it's cool. I put stuff in the background. I ain't going to see nothing. Okay. You know? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, man. But ultimately, with us doing this, man, yeah, how about Shimmy Havasha is watching it, just like he had watched it before. Because again, the last scripture that was brought out here was in Luke 1 and 72. I'm going to read it again. It says, to perform, perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. So how is he remembering his holy covenant? Ultimately, he remembered it because it was already written from the foundations of the earth. But those holy men were building, dedicating. What we're doing when it comes to the temple. Just as our ancient forefathers did. Exactly. In exactly. The hell, they always kept those righteous ways, man. That's right. That sacrifice was part of the covenant. That's it, Dedicating, that was part of the covenant. That's it was it. a must. That's that was our way of having communication with the Heavenly Father. That's it, bro. You know? That's it. That's it. And like you had stated, this is the, uh, you know, we, hey, we believe that this could this could very well be the generation that makes it because what are we doing? We're going back in those ancient ways. We're all speaking one toward another. We're going into how the Heavenly Father exists and how he's going to redeem his people. We're going into how we're the Israelites. You haven't seen this done no time in history before this, man. We're coming back to the Heavenly Father. We understand there was a falling way that was done. When I said no time before this, we get it. There was men that prophesied back then. But hey, Paul clearly prophesied about a falling away that was going to take place. And that falling away happened. Right. Now men are waking up to who they are. And we calling on to our God. And what is he doing? He is blessing us, man. He's revealing his mysteries. And we see who the, we see who the so-called white man who he is. He's the Edomites. He's the, he gotta be. It gotta be it. That's it. Look at what he's doing. Yeah. Look how, he, how he's conducting himself. No other answer, man. Nothing no. else makes sense, man. A fight from the womb, bro. That's right. And now it's being fulfilled here through what's about to happen, man. Martial law. So let's go ahead and get that Psalms 24. God. God. This is the book of Psalms. Beautiful, beautiful times, brothers. That's yeah, right. The, the story of Hanukkah com it compares. I mean, you can link that spiritually when you read it. I think every brother should read it, man. Second, first Maccabees, first Maccabees 1 through 4. Just read it. 
It all applies to today, man. That's right. All of it. If you're a spiritual man, go ahead. God, this is Psalms chapter 24, verse 3. And this is a question right here in verse 3, all right? It says, Who shall ascend into the hill of Yahweh? Or who shall stand in his holy place? All right? Who? Right. Who go who gonna be a part of that? Who are the ones who are promised to be joint heirs at the end of the day? Who shall abide in this holy hill? All right, as a as a as a as the psalm says. Go ahead. God, now the next verse is the answer. He that hath clean hands Woo! and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul to vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Man. And you, and you see a lot of that going on right chill. now. That's right. That's right. Sworn deceitfully. What does that go into ultimately? What do you, how do you swear? A lot of times you do that with what you say. We understand it's our actions, but you know, a lot of times it goes into what we say too. That's why you read it in Psalms 32. It says, in their spirit is found no God. No, you, you know, go. have not sworn deceitfully. Right. It's neither shall a deceitful tongue be found no, in their mouths. Mouth. Zephaniah, the third chapter. Man. You know, so that's who was going to ascend into the holy hill. Man. That's who's going to have clean hands. Right. There's going to be no guile. And you read about no guile being found in their mouth. It goes into the 144,000 who what? Understood the new song in Psalms 144 and 9. Right. They knew it. They knew it. Right. They prophesying. They right. singing that song but with faith. psalteries and harps and faith. No doubt. That's right. That's, that's right. The, that's a part of the, that generation too, man. They ain't going to have doubt like you other clowns, man. Go ahead. That's right. Verse 5. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord. So this, Man. he shall receive the blessing from the Lord. He that hath not sworn deceitfully, no guile, no sword, clean. No, they ain't gonna sell out. That's Keep right. His integrity. That's be a right, brother. Man. That's right. In righteousness, I'm, I'm gonna read verse five again. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord Yahweh, and righteousness from the God of His salvation. Woo verse six is the key point. This is the generation of them that seek Him. That seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. This is the generation that seek him. Read that again. This is the generation of them that seek him. That seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Man. <coughs> we could very well be a part of that generation. That's going to see immortality, brothers. That's right. Is it some more? Uh, I mean, hey, it's three more verses left. See what, what else is there? It, it goes in. Man, it definitely right. goes in. Go Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Now, do gates have heads? The gates are the leadership. Exactly. Right, because exactly. as the Lord said in Isaiah 1, I will, I'm going to restore your, uh, your judges, your counselors uh -huh. and your judges as before. The house of David right. being rebuilt as in the days of old. Go ahead. God. And be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors. Right. And the king of glory shall come in. The keys are going to give to give it to the house of David. That's right. Starting with David. Peter, That's right. Who is the king of glory? Yahweh, strong and mighty. Yahweh, mighty in battle. Woo! Because he he's going to be the one that's going to fight for us, man. That's right. ultimately how we're going to win. That's right. And if you don't have faith in that, then, man, and right now, you as an Israelite better pray, man. That's right. You better pray for the Lord to strengthen your faith, man. That's right. Because if you looking at what's here and you looking at the now, and that's your the end all be all of your thought process, you're not gonna win, man. That's right. Because the end all be all is not what we see. The end all be all is being delivered and the standard being lifted that was written about. Hold Yahweh Ba Shimiyashah to the promise that he wrote. Yahweh wrote, he promised us, man. That's right. So, so somebody got to receive that. Yep. And we could very well be of that generation, man. That's right. <sighs> yes, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of Glory shall come in. Who is the King of Glory? Yahweh of hosts. Mm. He is the King of Glory, mm. Salah. And what comes with Yahweh Shai? His men. Yeah. He that heareth you, heareth me. Mm -hmm. So we we could very well be a part of that generation, man. That's that right. are joint heirs with Yahweh Shah. That is a like Huge me and deal. you were talking earlier. Yeah. That is a big deal. That's right. To be joint heirs with Yahweh Shah, man. That's that's not no light thing. Right. You're not gonna be no low level Israelite. All right. You're gonna be a high level. All right. Upstanding man whose memorial is gonna be known forever and ever and ever throughout the earth, man. Right. 
with Yahweh Shah being ahead of that. So we just wanted to bring that out, man, because we living at the time, man, where, man, get uh, Obadiah. Let's end it up. We might as well end it off on that. Whatever else you got, Obadiah, the last verse. Okay, Kyle, let's get it. <laughs> Obadiah, verse 21. And Savior shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be Yahweh's. Right, completion will be forever. Completion will be forever, man. All right, the the king, the, the fourth beast, and that little horn that came of it are just about up, man. Yep. And that those that once those were destroyed, that's it. Yep. So. Keep your mind geared towards righteousness flourishing, geared towards life, geared towards living, geared towards uh, the standard. Don't have your mind sunken in the, 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 the condition of the battle, which is right. hell and all of that. Right, right, right. That's not the end all be all. The end all be all is the Lord working a miraculous work, man. And I want to be a part of that, man. That's right. I don't want, I don't, you know, of course, all Israel is going to be saved, but I want to be a part of that first dominion, man. That's right. Whether I'm a, a, a martyr or whether, you know, uh, uh, the Lord has mercy on me and, uh, you know, and beams me up. Come on, straight That's up. what we want. So, straight up. Whatever you got. Hey, man, don't, we don't want the Lord to take. We don't want Yahweh Bashim Yahweh to take that crown off our heads, out, out of our hands, man. We have the crowns with us right now. You know, we have the crowns. Our job is to not let that be taken away. You know, and if we're able to maintain that crown and keep it, a physical crown is going to be placed on our heads from Yahweh Shai. Right. And those are going to be the ones who he finds worthy enough to be considered his joint heir who's willing to fight. And that's something to fight for, man. All right. Hey, what the scriptures say, in order to fight, in order to be part of that, have to have that clean, them clean hands, man. You know, so we understand we got to do to receive those clean hands. We just got to execute it. And we have examples in history as we're reading about right now in Second and First Maccabees. All right, just like they use those examples as we had as Moses. You know, we have these ancient men as examples of men that have done it. You know, so there's no excuses. Let's get it. You know, that's all I got. Hey, so hopefully I'll edify through the spirit. We go give all praise to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rechakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the elect. Shalom. Shalom.